Hey guys, Waterfaller41 here, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to upgrade your Uconnect 4 system with a Uconnect 5 system using the infotainment.com turnkey kit for these trucks. So the 2019 to 2021, I believe, Ram pickup trucks came with Uconnect 4. It's an okay system, but the biggest flaw of it is it requires a wired CarPlay system. Enter Uconnect 5, which now incorporates wireless CarPlay, as well as a significantly better operating system. So we're gonna be upgrading my 12 inch Uconnect 4 system with the 12 inch Uconnect 5 system. Again, using this turnkey system or turnkey kit from infotainment.com. Uh, so let's walk through everything that comes in the kit. You obviously get the new screen. And again, I'm gonna go with the 12 inch screen, but if you have a factory five or factory 8.4, this is a good time to upgrade to that 12 inch. It's literally the best screen on the market today. Um, this new screen is needed to run the Uconnect 5. You can't use your factory screen that's running Uconnect 4 with the Uconnect 5 model. It's just not possible, it just doesn't work that way. Comes with a whole new bezel. You're gonna need to swap over some factory controls just like we did when we upgraded to the 12 inch before. We're gonna need to swap over our brake controller as well as uh, the other factory switches here and then up on top the cigarette lighter. When you move over here, the other part of this kit that makes the magic happen is the new module. So this is the Uconnect 5 module that we're gonna need to run Uconnect 5 on our older gen, fifth gen truck. Um, comes a new radio key. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in my glove box just to make sure I have it. Outside of the hardware, you get a bunch of cables here and the cables here are to make everything as seamless as possible. So you're gonna get a new video plug here. So this goes from the module here into your new screen. And then you're gonna get a couple retrofit harnesses. So this harness here is to allow you to adapt the older Uconnect 4 plug to the Uconnect 5 plug. So they now use the blue and teal plug here. You're gonna get a USB conversion cable as well as a satellite radio conversion cable. And then the last magic piece of the kit is the OBD Genie dongle here. So this plugs into your OBD port underneath your radio and it allows you to push in the new programming so you can run Uconnect 5. And I'll show you how to do that in, I'll say chapter three of this installation. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop in the truck and I'll show you how easy it is to remove the factory radio. A couple tools you might need, Phillips head screwdriver, get yourself a little pick and then a little tiny jeweler screwdriver and I'll show you where we need this on the top of the radio when we remove that factory plug. All right, so we're inside the truck. First thing you're gonna do is put a towel down. Put a big beach towel down, that way you're not gonna scratch any trim. The other reason I say that is because once you upgrade from the Uconnect 4 radio or your factory radio, whatever you have, to the Uconnect 5, you can actually take your old equipment and sell it back to infotainment.com. So I'll leave a link down in the description, but basically you go on there, you tell them what you have, and then they'll give you a price and you can basically sell it back to them but it's basically an option to lessen the financial blow of upgrading to whatever you connect five system you go to, be it the 8.4 or the 12. Okay. The first thing you're gonna to do to remove this and the only screws you gotta remove are basically two Phillips head screws up on top. So let me get my bullet point mount out of the way and I'll show you where those screws are. But once you take those screws out, the whole radio itself just pops straight out and I'll show you that in a minute. Top portion of our bullet point mount out of the way, you could see you get access now to the Phillips head screws. So there's one here and one here. Every radio, every radio will have that regardless of whatever foam mount or what you have up here. So I'm go ahead, undo those, and then I'll show you how to yank the radio out. All right, so once you have the two Phillips head screws out of there, it's as simple as taking the top of the radio and just pulling it straight out. So it's gonna take two hands that way when you pull it out, it doesn't drop and bash on everything. Um, but it's very simple and don't be too rough with it, but it, there are a bunch of clips up and down the side here and you do need to give it a little bit of oomph to get it out of there. But once you do, it's very simple. All right, so once you loosen up everything, again, you can just kind of lay it right there, but the radio just basically teeters right off the front of the console. So it's super easy to get everything off. Just be super careful. Again, this is a big screen. A lot of area that you could scratch if you're not careful. Again, this towel is a lifesaver. So let's go ahead and pull everything out and I'll give you a, a quick view of all the wire harnesses. But basically all we need to do at this point is unplug everything on the back of the radio so that we could start trans or, uh, transplanting this area, this little control panel, as well as the cigarette outlet onto the new module so we can get that reinstalled here. With all right, so I went ahead and pulled the radio all the way forward. I left everything plugged in with the exception of the cigarette lighter outlet plug here. All I wanna do is basically pull this back to show you what I was dealing with. So right now we only have a handful of plugs in here. We have that harness that I installed in order to retrofit the 12 into my stereo. This all is gonna come unplugged, so we're just gonna take out this whole harness here. We're gonna unplug this wire here. I we're gonna unplug the brake, trailer brake controller, as well as the front collision sensors down here. So let's go ahead, unplug these guys, get this radio out of the vehicle, and then unscrew the four screws holding this guy into place. There's four Phillips head screws, and then we can pull the rest of the plugs off here. 
this is where having a pick is going to be super helpful a lot of these plugs particularly these little plastic ones are super tricky to get a finger in there so if you use a pick you could actually pick at the the tang to pull things up and i think i just got that one yeah see so using a pick is super helpful and you, you can get for a couple bucks at harbor freight this is a very good time to go ahead and take a picture of all the wires everything is color coded but you just want to make sure you double check everything so Take a picture of it, that way you know where everything goes just in case you need to bail last second and go back and redo everything or reinstall this guy. But what I'm gonna do here now is use my pick tool to carefully undo each of those plugs here. Uh, once I get that out, then this module can be removed and then we can go in and start installing our retrofit harnesses to accommodate the new Uconnect 5 uh, module. All right, so now the next thing we need to do is swap over some of the hardware from the Uconnect 4 center console bezel over to the new one. So this whole control panel needs to come out as well as the cigarette lighter. So let's first focus on the bottom control panel here. Got it flipped over. There are a couple of T15 Torx screws on the bottom here. And once you remove those, that could then slip, it'll pop out of this module and you can slip it right back into there and reuse the same screws to install everything. All right, so we have that old or the original OEM control module, the brake controller, as well as all my front collision sensor buttons removed from the factory bezel or that old Uconnect 4. And now all we gotta do is just slide it right into place here. And then it'll click into place with some tangs. And then we'll take the two screws that we removed from this on the center console and then use those to reinstall on the back here. Again, these are Torx T15. Now what we're gonna do is turn our attention to this guy. So if you look around the edge of the outlet here, you're gonna see a bunch of little fingers. I think there's two or three of them. What you wanna do is pry those up while pushing here, that way, this whole metal and green section is gonna push straight out of the housing itself. So let's go ahead and flip the flap open, but you cannot remove the housing until you remove this piece. So you just take a flathead screwdriver here and just pry it up carefully and then carefully just wiggle this guy out. Once you do that, then you can push on these tangs all around the outside to get the, the cover itself out. Super simple, let's get it out. Like I said, there's a bunch of, there's two fingers here, one on each side, they're 180 degrees difference from each other. You need to pry those open so you could slide this whole piece straight out. So it should be straight out that way. Once you do that, then you can pry in here as well as up top and the housing will come out and then you reverse the order. So you'll pop this into place first in the top of the radio and then this should slide in one way. There's little keys on there just to make sure that it's oriented the right way. Once you've done that, then everything is good to go on a new radio. You can go ahead and package this up. And like I said, you can go on infotainment.com and sell your old hardware and make some money off it to lessen the blow on this project cost. All right, now before we go ahead and install our module here, there's a couple wire harnesses that we're gonna wanna install before anything else. So first is this big old radio harness. And again, this is what converts the older style plug. So right here, the switch style plug, latch style I should say, to the new style so you can plug that into the module. So this is all your speaker level inputs and everything so you can see all the speaker cables here. Second thing you wanna do is take this USB converter cable and you're gonna to wanna to plug this gray plug into the, boop, yep. You wanna plug this gray side into here and then this new end is what plugs into the new module. Unfortunately, it's not the same plug so you gotta have this little converter harness here. But again, everything's plug and play, you're not splicing anything. And then it's really as simple as matching all the colors up of the rest of the wires here and plugging them into the module and then reinstalling the module and pushing all those wires back into this big old hole in the center. I right, wasn't totally thrilled with my original footage, so I wanted to refilm the wiring here. So anyway, lots of plugs going on behind the new module here, and I just wanna make sure I show you where each of the plugs go on the new module, because one plug in particular does not go where it was on the original Uconnect 4 module here. So anyway, you have that retrofit harness here that takes your factory plug, turns it into the new Uconnect 5 speaker plug, or you know the teal and blue. Very easy, self-explanatory. Plugs into the factory plug, and then the rest of the wire goes into the little terminals on the back of the module. Then you have your maroon Fakra plug. That goes right onto the maroon Fakra female plug on the back of the module. Very easy, the colors match perfectly. Then you have this white plug. So, or I'm sorry, this cable. This cable comes in the kit if you are upgrading from the five or eight inch to the 12 inch but it should already be installed if you already have the 12 inch. But anyway, this plug or this cord comes in the kit, plugs into the back of the module, and then the other end of it plugs into the back of the screen itself, and that's your, your video cable. Then if you look over on the other side of the module, you have this little plug here, again, a white Fokker plug, matches with the white terminal that it plugs into. 
And then if you recall, we had this little mustard unit and then we have this little converting kit, so this or this little conversion wire. So this little mustard plug here, originally plugged into right about here on the uh, Uconnect 4 module. However, on the Uconnect 5 modules, it actually plugs into this little converter cable, so this teal converter cable, and then plugs into the blue terminal on the back of the Uconnect 5 harness. This is your satellite uh, compass and this it needs to be plugged in the right port for your navigation to work for your gps time to work and for your compass on your dash to work that is it for the plugs here so again everything's pretty self-explanatory i'm going to zoom in one more time just kind of give you an overview of everything again if there is one spot where you can mess up outside of the programming side of things this is where it's going to be because this plug might actually fit over here um so don't mess it up. Anyway, so let's get back to the original footage and I'll show you how to program everything using the OBD Genie dongle here. And then uh, we'll do a brief overview of how well this guy performs. All right, showing you this just to prove that this does fit in there. I, it's a very tight fit. There's a lot of wires. So be super careful. Don't shove everything in there. There is a home. Uh, just tuck everything in there. The biggest pain in the butt is that big factory retrofit wire harness. It's about that thick. Uh, you just got to move it into place and then carefully slide everything in place. Once you get it in there, everything does fit nice and snug. So what you should be left with is this white plug. So this is the INTLVDS. So basically this is the, the plug that goes into the back of the screen. Then you have all your plugs for the climate control, parking brake, and front collision sensors. And then the last thing up top, again, I did it right this time, is your cigarette lighter outlet. So it is very simple now. Now everything just plugs right into the new screen. We're going to push that back into place, reinstall those two Phillips head screws, and then I'll show you how to program everything so that this new radio works. All right, so we have our new center bezel here ready to go. Like I said, we got our transplanted cigarette light outlet and our controllers down at the bottom here. Now all we need to do is go ahead and connect this white plug. That goes right here on the center of the screen. Then we have this retrofit harness that comes already plugged into the, the screen. We're gonna find the corresponding plug and I believe it's this one that's gonna plug right into that harness. And then these two guys right here will plug into the bottom. So the wider gray one plugs in right here. And then this one is our collision or our brake controller. Plugs in right like that. Uh, so once we get everything plugged in, we could then make sure this cord is uh, tucked away nicely so it's not gonna rattle back there. And then slide up everything and make sure you plug this in before you tighten everything down. There's not a lot of cable on here, so you have to do that once this radio is pulled up into place. But let's go ahead and plug everything in here and then I'll show you how to put the security bypass install or install the security bypass and then start to push the programming into the truck so we can run Uconnect 5 here. All right, so the new center console went right up into place. Again, there's a lot of wires behind there. Be careful, don't jam everything. Everything will fit. You just need to make sure you guide things into the openings. So now that I have everything installed up top here and the center console is good to go, we could take those two factory screws here and drive those into the top and that's what's gonna hold everything into place and then we can focus on the programming. So let's get this guy fully and mechanically installed and then I'll show you how to push the program. All right, so the next part here is we need to go ahead and install the security gateway bypass. In order to do any sort of programming on the BMS or the BCM in the truck itself, you need to install this bypass so that it's basically going around the firewall so you can push in the new programming using the, UB, uh, the OBD dongle here from OBD Genie. So. I'll explain where it's at. It's hard to show you, but basically there's a metal bracket right about here on the 1500s and the module itself is hanging off on the side of it. All you need to do, the plugs go in the bottom of the module. All you need to do is just press the tangs on them and pull them down. And then there's enough cable to get access to them right up underneath the truck here. This is my bypass for my tuner. So I'm gonna unplug that and I'm gonna use the bypass that came in the OB, uh, with the infotainment.com kit just so we keep everything copacetic here. So let's go ahead and install this. Once we install this, we could then push the programming into the truck and I'll show you how that works in a minute. All right, so the security bypass is installed. You can see it right here, it's just hanging by the wires. Once we're done pushing the programming in, we can unplug this and take it out of the vehicle. This is my tuner plug, so let's ignore that, but the OBD port is right here. So now what we need to do is turn the vehicle to on, give it a minute or two, and then we're gonna go ahead and plug this guy in, which will automatically push the new programming into the vehicle. This is why it's important to give them the right VIN number so that they know what program you need in order to make sure the new hardware works in your truck. All right, so let's go ahead and turn the vehicle to the on position. So it's on, give it a minute or two. All right, let's go ahead and install the dongle. So you can see it's blinking blue. 
All right, so once the OBD dongle turns green, solid green, then we're good to go. And my truck just did a little honk and the radio reset there. So we are good to go. So now what we could do is unplug this guy, turn the vehicle off, do a sleep cycle, and then we can go ahead and unplug that security bypass, let everything go back to sleep. And then effectively our radio should be powered on and good to go. All right, so after you push the programming into the truck or into the BCM using that OBD Genie dongle, last thing you need to do is perform a sleep cycle. So the way I do it is I open the door, I close it, and then I wait for this little EVIC screen to shut off. Once it shuts off, that means the BCM went to sleep. Once that happens, then we can go ahead and fire up the truck and test out the functionality of our new radio. All right, so the BCM just went to sleep. Everything's good. That is the last step of the installation. Now the last thing we need to do is just have some fun, turn the truck on and check out the radio once it fires up here. So everything's live and active, working. Mine opens up on the navigation screen. So the navigation in the newer radios is TomTom. Tom. I don't know what it was on the Uconnect 4, but TomTom Tom probably is a little bit more robust of an engine for GPS. That's the factory onboard GPS. So the other thing that, or I guess the real big advantage of the newer radios is wireless CarPlay. So I already had my phone connected. My phone's here, no wire. Everything's working properly. I can go into the wireless CarPlay application here. Uh, I could look through everything. We can go into Spotify. Everything's working wirelessly. This again is the primary reason why I wanted to upgrade here. Um, also, uh, you know, it's a more robust operating system, but also everything's full screen, but everything works properly here. When you do these radio updates, the one thing I will advise is make sure you verify that the features are working here. So make sure your climate control is working, it turns on, it turns off. Um, make sure your rear camera is working. So if I go to vehicle, I think it's a vehicle here. Yep. Um, this is one of the features that sometimes it takes a cycle or two to come back. Just make sure that you got a feed here and you don't have any sort of air. Then the other thing that I was mentioning earlier is make sure your compass comes back. So you can see right now my compass isn't there. If I drive a little bit, it'll eventually come in. It'll pick up a signal here. Um, and then what it'll do as you drive, see, yeah, see, so it just picked up the signal. What it'll do over time is it'll calibrate itself. So I might not necessarily be facing north, but if I go backwards, sometimes it changes it. It takes a little bit, see, it just flipped the south. It takes a little bit and some driving around for everything to really recalibrate itself. So don't freak out if certain things aren't functioning properly. As long as they're functioning, everything should be in good shape and just give it time and everything to reset here. But anyway, everything's working properly as it should. I'm totally stoked to have the Uconnect 5 platform in my truck. Absolutely love you know the look of it. The user interface is awesome. And again, the wireless car plays a huge feature, which means I could change out my new phone mount to a different one and get a MagSafe one, which has a higher amperage uh, charging rate instead of having to rely on the plug down here. Very easy install, just follow the steps. Again, make sure your wiring is proper. I messed it up the original time and my compass wasn't working. Make sure you use all the cables in the kit. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I will gladly help out on this one. And last but not least, I know I get this question a lot every time I do a radio install, is it worth it? I for sure think this one's worth it. And I'll give you a one, you know, one of the new features on this. Um, TomTom Tom has a feature where if you're coming to an intersection that has a red light camera, it actually beeps on your radio. You could turn that feature off, but I learned that yesterday while I was driving my kids to the ice rink, and that is an awesome feature to have. You know, that's just some of the, you know, the bonuses of upgrading to the Uconnect 5. So anyway, process is very simple. Pull out your factory radio, pull out all the plugs, put in the new harnesses, the, retro, the three or four retrofit harnesses, plug in the new module, plug that module into the new screen, slide up everything into place, go ahead and push your programming into the truck using the OBD port and the security bypass, perform a, uh, a sleep cycle on your BCM, then fire up everything and verify everything works. If you have any other questions, leave them down below or reach out to the infotainment.com folks. It is one of the best customer service lines I've ever reached out to. I did have a question during this install, reached out to them and they got back to me almost instantly within the hour. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this one. I appreciate y'all watching my channel. Like, comment, subscribe below. But with that said, thank you very much for watching. Appreciate it guys.